What's up guys? So today we're going to be going over Precision Raceworks new in-tank regulator and fuel filter. Um, this is the assembly. We just got it in today. Um, from what I understand, they've been working on this piece for, you know, a little over six months. The benefits of it are it's got a built-in uh, one-to-one boost reference regulator, um, which is five bar, 72 PSI. Uh, quick release AN connector for your fuel line. Um, comes with a new Venturi setup and everything that you would need for your car to function properly. And also, um, it's got better flow. With a single pump, it's about 37% more flow than the factory regulator and uh, top hat. So, this is the aftermarket one. Here we're looking at the stock one. We are going to take a few parts off of this one. Um, the floater arm, a piece of the Venturi system, and then Precision Raceworks was kind enough to include two lines which go from the bottom of their um, aftermarket top hat to the passenger side where your fuel pump is and your uh, return lines. So we won't have to reuse um, the factory ones, which is quite nice. So to start out, we're going to pop this arm off. It's got a little clip right here. Just like that. Next, we're going to kind of flip it over. And this is your floater that tells your um, fuel indicator where it's going to be. So it kind of just pops out. Um, from what I understand, you kind of pry up on the bottom of it. And it pops out just like that. So next, we're going to have to unplug our Venturi system, which is um, what we will be replacing. We had to uh, make some adjustments with our lighting and our uh, microphones. But like we were talking about before for the Venturi system, there's a little um, thing that you click right here. And it this pulls out this way. So when you click it, it should pop off like that. And start releasing some of this and getting all it all out of the way. There's a factory zip tie along these. I'm going to trim this one off so we can get some of this out of the way. So next, we got to get this fuel arm off right here. So as you can see, it's got a little pin in there too. So my cameraman ended up having to help me with this one actually. This slot's pretty small, so you need a fairly small flathead screwdriver. The way it works is this pin slides down into there, and you have to push the top for it to clamp just enough to slide out like so. As you can see, it, it has that little angle on it to hold it in its place. Um, so there's one more zip tie we need to trim off real quick. Got that. And... We have all these separate. So they kind of have a weird orientation for the wiring, but for the float system, which is um, going to mount on here and then further mount onto the new style um, regulator and pump, um, you only need to cut. The wiring orientation doesn't matter. All it, all it does is giving a feedback to the car. So give give yourself a good amount of you know wire. So you, if you mess anything up, you can do it a second time. Usually go right up to around here, trim them. Then you have this separate, as well as this separate. So we can set the factory top hat to the side now. This is what it looks like um, disassembled. All right, so I took that uh, factory one outside just because it was dripping fuel all over my living room, starting to stink up the place a little bit. So. Our next process is we are going to be mounting this onto the new regulator. It's got a spot for it. Apparently it has these um, little indents on it that we have to trim off for it to slide in properly. Um, so we're going to kind of find out. I'm going to give it a test try. So yeah, it is a little bit, a little bit thick. So what uh, Precision Raceworks re recommended to do was very lightly trim this plastic off the edges. 
just to make it a little bit smaller. All right, so we trimmed off our little edges. From what I understand, you really only need to take the sharp corners off of it because it's just a hair too big to go into its thing. So it slid right in there. Let's see if we can get a clip into place as so. So now we have that mounted. Next, we are going to be mounting our float arm. And it actually mounts into here as such, right next to this other factory piece we just installed. So clips in just like that, clipped in. Next, we're gonna take the provided Venturi pump, the new Venturi pump that was supplied with it, and plug it in to this factory one, just like that. Nice and seated, nice and tight. Um, so next we're going to do our um, float assembly, which mounts onto here. So forgive me if I put it in wrong the first time. I, I believe it goes this way. Actually, I believe it goes this way. Okay, that's all home. So, next we have our two wires that actually run to um, your float system. It's got a little, they put a little zip tie on it. I'm going to trim it off so we have a little bit of extra um, room to work with on our crimps. Okay, so like I said earlier, doesn't matter which way. That's why they're all the same color. All it is, it's giving a resistance to the car. So we're going to strip these back and then um, crimp them onto the supplied crimps that Precision gave us. Okay, so we stripped back our wires, um, crimped them, and that should be good to go. It's nice and mounted. Everything's mounted. Venturi system seems to be happy. Last but not least, we take the supplied lines from precision raceworks there's two different ones one of them you'll notice i'm getting them all mixed up here one of them has uh one of the fitting ends and one of them's just an open end so this is your return and the other one has ends on both of them there's a large and a small so the large one goes on the driver's side regulator slash filter the smaller one goes directly to your fuel pump and it supplies this so, kind of hard to tell until you take these little plugs out, but in person you can tell they're pretty different in size. That's what I'm talking about with the size difference. So, apparently on this one it's the straight end instead of the 90 degree. It's going to go on to the big fitting on this regulator. It's going to clip on like that. We're going to take our return one. It's going to clip onto the smaller fitting. And that is it for this part of the assembly. Next up, we will be uh, putting it in the car and seeing if it works. Okay, so now we're in the car. Uh, this is the driver's side, this is the passenger side. Here's our uh, fuel pump and the bucket and this top hat. We're going to be taking the supplied lines from Precision Raceworks and we're going to cross them over to the tank um, for the return and the feed. So I figured it'd be easier to do it without them being clipped onto the new top hat. So I'm going to kind of do it without it. It is going to be messy because I got to reach my arm through the tank. So now I'm going to run this return on first. Hopefully I can keep it on the top of the tank and it'll. Go right through. I don't know how lucky I'm going to be, though. Oh, yeah. I think I see it. Yes. Okay, so there's the first one I just ran. It's going to be a return. Now we're going to do the feed. 
Remember, you want the big end on the driver's side and the little end on the passenger side. You get them mixed up, you can see the big and the small. Big end is the straight one. Yeah, obviously you want to do this on a low tank of fuel. Yes. Okay, I think this is it. But yes, this is it. Now we got both of the lines run. While we're over here, let show the cameraman. Down on here, I have a Walbro 450 with a black market parts fitting. You can just barely see right there the BMP. And it's got a fitting to... For this to plug into so should go rather smoothly do that so i'm gonna plug in this quick connect one to my fuel pump first okay there's that quick quick plug now we're gonna run our turns Now, last but not least, I got the first return plugged in, fuel pump plugged in. We're going to drop the aftermarket hat down into its place. And we got to run this black hose over to the passenger side as well so it can go, go, go into its home as well. So I'm going to do that real quick. Hopefully I can do it from this side. Not getting messy. Probably would have been easier to zip tie all three of these together, but I didn't plan ahead for that. Okay, got the last one over here. They actually go pretty smoothly through. We'll have our cameraman show you what we did over here so you can have an idea of what happened. So. Here's the feed line like I was talking about, the quick connect. Here's the first clear line that we ran the very first time. And then here is the Venturi system, which was the last one that I ran. The last one, at least, actually, there's a vent tube on the bottom of this hat. that's down in the tank, so before you install it, it's kind of tough because you got to kind of keep it on its side when you install it. But it should click right in. And there's an orientation to this because the tanks sit in that, uh, at an angle. So the top hat can only go in one direction. And it's got a little marking where it sits at home. So that feels like it's about home to me. Looks home. So next we're gonna take our block ring. And just so it's held, we'll tighten it when we finish up, make sure everything's functioning. Vent plugs on top right there, secondary vent right there, and then you have, um, I believe this was the EKP plug, it's going to plug in right there, and then we actually did an aftermarket setup for our car, so we turned ours into ends instead of these flimsy factory ones because they were starting to overheat with our bigger fuel pump. That's the method we went, we put in studs and yep, that's how it is. Now we're gonna take our connectors from the other side of the tank, plug them in. First one. Second one. This also has an orientation. It's got a little nipple right here. And the nipples has a little home spot back here, like seven o'clock on the on the top of the tank where it's um, supposed to sit and seal. 
Getting these down in here can be a little tricky. There she's home. Uh, before I put the lock ring tool on, it won't really stay, but that's how it's going to look when you guys get it installed. So next I'm just installing this uh, lock ring. we're going to take our feed line that goes to the high pressure fuel pump and it should plug right into this voila not coming loose we'll check for leaks obviously so you're going to take your connector From Precision Race Works and plug it into your factory one. Looks like it only plugs in one way. Okay, that's nice. Plugged in. We're good to go. That's your Precision Race Works in tank filter slash regulator install.